if I allow him to take a little bit longer. But truthfully, as a human being, I hope that he doesn't take that long to work some things out in my life. But I also have to fight against that, understanding that whatever God is going to work out in my life, he knows what is best and he's going to bring out something way better in the end. Right. He's going to bring out something way better in the end. So watch this. So this sickness. So Jesus himself says that. And watch this. Imagine because Jesus did, We just said that this is his friend. So I would imagine that Jesus would like to be there immediately. And Jesus could be there immediately if he wanted to. And yet he says that, man, I could be there, but I got to hold up because there's something bigger happening right now. So he says this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he, and watch this, you see how Jesus continually talking about the love that God has for them. That's, that's just one of the things that John continually talks about is this love, this love, this love. When he had, I'm at verse six, when he had heard therefore that he was sick, watch this, he abode two days still, in the same place where he was. So watch this. Imagine that Jesus is being late on purpose. And in Jesus being late on purpose, he's still on time. You see what I'm saying? Right? In Jesus being late on purpose, he's, he's right on time. Jesus, he said that I'm going to wait two days when I could get there in less than 10 minutes. But I'm going to wait two days. It, yeah, right? I'm going to wait two days, even though I could get there in 10 minutes. So just think about that. So, so in, 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 ah, yes, thank you, Father God, for reminding me of that. So let me go to my notes really quickly. So one of the things that I wrote down is this, because I also want you to think about how you're operating in your life. Not every important issue requires you to rush to solve it, even though you may be competent to do so even though you may be competent to do so. And watch this, why is that hard? That's hard for me to understand because I'm a problem solver. If there's anything that's hard for me to do, it's hard for me to sit down, listen to somebody talk about the issues that they're having when I know that I can bring some solutions, but yet they might want me to just sit there and listen. Because in my head, I'm like, listen, like we could, you know we could like just we have a solution to the issue, right? Like, these are some of the things that we can do. And the person's like, listen, I just want you to listen. But I'm like, but these are some of the things that we could do to solve the problem. But I just want you to listen, <laughs> right? right? But, but what I've come to understand when I was reading this is that even Jesus says, listen, there's times where you can solve the problem, but it's not time yet for you to solve the problem, right? And, so I, and, and the reason why I bring that up is because I want us to understand what God does for us and what Jesus does for us because it's for us to also sometimes do the same thing for other people. And I don't want us to just go home just understanding that, all right, God is doing this for us. But where do we need to have that same character? Where do we need to also implement that same principle of, listen, not every single problem is for you to be the one to bring the solution. And it, 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 trust me, it's difficult because sometimes you have to even allow certain people who are going through a process as much as we want to bring the solution for them, some people, unfortunately, will not learn until they go through it. And some people will not learn until they experience the losses that they're going to experience, right? right? For, 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 some reason, so for some reason, some of us just learn better when we learn the hard way. It sinks in a little bit better. You see what I'm saying? And so God sometimes has to allow people to go through a particular process because he's doing something. He's doing something and, 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 and what's going to come out of it. Remember what I told you all. It's, it's, I never foresaw myself once again having to go through a divorce. I never foresaw myself getting kicked out of school. I never foresaw myself getting um, 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 laid off from a job. But somehow, some way, going through all of that, God has taken those situations and made me better since then after having gone through those things, right? So God sometimes like, listen, you're going to go through something challenging, but, 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 but I'm going to be glorified way more in the end if you allow yourself to embrace that process. So, so then we get to, uh, hold on one second, let me get back to my verse here. Right, so, so we, we were just dealing with um, uh, verse 6, right? So he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then we get to verse 7. 
Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into, into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? <laughs> if any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is, not, there is no light in him. I, I, I didn't really even, I was going to plan to skip this, but I'll get into it just for, for a second. This, what Jesus almost in essence does is says, we are not going to go forth in fear anymore. Well, Jesus was never going forth in fear. But some of the disciples had some fear and some trepidation about the situation that was at hand. And, 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 and watch this. He says, Jesus says, as long as there is daytime, he, he was in essence trying to tell them, listen, the sun is shining right now. We have light, right? The people that we're dealing with aren't foolish enough to come after us in the daytime. And as a matter of fact, we kind of know that because when they finally did eventually come after Jesus, when was it? At night, right? Remember, they came in the dark in order to do what they were going to do to Jesus, right? But Jesus is like, listen, we, we don't got anything to like. Let's stop tripping. There's nothing for us to worry about. The sun is shining. We still got 12 hours left in the day. We're not even worried about them because they're not going to come after us right now. So, so then again, again, what does that mean for us and how we live today, right? Because even if we're not talking about literally days, right? But what we're specifically talking about that is that if we are walking in the light, right? If we are walking in the day, if, if, if Jesus is our light, then there's no need for us to walk in fear. You see what I'm saying? Of what it is that he has called us to do, what it is that we believe that he has placed on our heart to do. And, and, and sometimes we get caught up in fear. Well, is what... It, 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 is what I'm doing going to actually bear fruit? Are people going to laugh at me for what I'm doing, right? Remember I told you all that it was said that it, um, um, I was reading there was a, a, a man who was a warden of a prison and they asked him, you know, what's the easiest way to control somebody's behavior? And he said, the easiest way to control somebody's behavior is to laugh at them. Why? Because nobody likes to be laughed at. And so because people don't like to be laughed at, they will usually conduct themselves in a particular way not to really stand out from the crowd. You see what I'm saying? Because they don't want to be considered an oddball. But what you have to understand is that because we are in the light, there's, we don't have to worry about whether people are laughing at, or, at us or whatever. Because at the end of the day, when, when, when God brings the work that we're doing into fruition right, and proves it, we're going to be glad that we went ahead and took those steps that he has asked, asked us to take, right? And everybody, watch this, and most of the people who are onlookers who might have been laughing before are going to say to themselves, man, I wish I had joined on the bandwagon that they were on at that point in time. And you, isn't that usually the case? Usually when somebody all of a sudden, they chose to go another route and then all of a sudden find themselves in areas of success, everybody else now wishes that they had gotten to know them when they were at their beginning stages. So don't have any fear of going forward, all right? All right, where was I? Okay, so verse 11. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, our friend, again, Jesus talk, considering Lazarus a friend, John using this whole theme of friendship and love throughout the stories, right? Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. <laughs> you know, the disciples were funny. The disciples were funny. They, like, they never got it, ever. <laughs> like, how be it Jesus spake of his death? But they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep, right? So then Jesus had to do this, watch. So then, then it says, then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, guys. That's what I mean, right? <laughs> Lazarus is dead, okay? <laughs> and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. Isn't that crazy? Let me not even go into that as yet. Watch this. Then, Jesus said, then said Jesus unto them, watch this, plainly, Lazarus is dead. But watch how Jesus is saying, First, the first thing that he says to them is that Lazarus is asleep. What you have to understand is that, I think I wrote it down in a better way than I'm about to say. I want to say how I wrote it down, right? Watch this. 
when Jesus says that, when Jesus refers to Lazarus' death as sleep, what he does is, in essence, this. He's teaching us to have a perspective from another dimension. Exactly. Right? And I think that goes back to what I was saying before, because we sometimes are looking at the issues that we're going through and wondering, like, okay, God, like, this does not make any sense. Why would you have me to go through this if I'm your child? If, if I'm the one that you just said that you love and you call me friend, then why am I experiencing death in so many areas of my life? Right? And, 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 and what you have to understand is that you're, what we have to understand is that we're looking from things from the human perspective from the perspective of the natural, from the perspective of our flesh. And what Jesus is in essence doing is, is, is saying, listen, what, what did I say before? Frame it from the positive. You're looking at this thing as death. And what I'm trying to explain to you is that you need to have a different perspective. The perspective that you need to understand is that this is not death. If, if, if you are spiritually minded, then this is not death. This is just sleep because you understand that this is just temporary. Right. You understand that eventually I'm going to raise him up at some point in time, even if we're just talking about just the last day when Christ finally comes back. Watch this. I am eventually going to raise Lazarus up. So there's no need for you to, 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 to look. If, if you look at it from the lens of your human ability or what happens to humans in general, then you're going to limit what's possible. So I want you to frame things from the perspective of what's impossible, and I want you to begin believing that the impossible is now what's possible. Why? Because you're not looking at it from the dimension of human beings. You're looking at it from a heavenly dimension, right? And so all those things that we've been praying for, right? I don't want us to, the, the reason why I'm talking about for in this church from just what we think is possible, but I want us to approach it from what, the, from, from what is possible because of what's happening in heavenly places. Right. So you got to understand that the, the, uh, there's a particular a minister. His name is Bill Winston. and He often talks about this. The fact that there's a difference between fact and truth. Right. The fact is in this story that that the fact is that Lazarus is dead. Right. That's the fact, so to speak. But but the truth of the matter is that it, it, when you look at it from the perspective of heaven, the truth of the matter is that he's just sleep. Right. So the fact is, from from our perspective, that death seems to be a, temp a, a permanent thing. But the truth of the matter is that it's temporary for those that believe in Christ. Amen. Jesus. Amen. See what I'm saying? So a perspective from another dimension. Now, watch this. Let me get back to my verse. Let me get back to my verse. All right, so Jesus says, watch this, and, and I am glad for your sakes, this is verse 15, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. So watch this, he even says it, he even says it plainly. What I'm doing here, I'm almost glad that I didn't help you before. Why? Because your belief system, your, 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 your faith is going to be stronger because I didn't operate when I could have. Because I decided to wait, your belief is going to be stronger. Then said Thomas, this is verse 16, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. I don't even know what, Thomas was a wild man. <laughs> That's just so negative. <laughs> but he's like, let us go so that we, can, we may die with him. But, but understand, and understand that we understand that Thomas was a doubter, right? So in essence, Thomas is saying, and remember, Thomas is thinking what? The, the disciples are thinking that, listen, if we go, these people are going to try to kill you also, Jesus. And so Thomas is like, well, I guess it's time to die for us also. So we're going to just go and die. And I got to respect it at the same time, right? I got to respect it. Because at the very least, he was ready to die alongside Jesus. At the very least, right? But he almost went in there. Jesus is trying to tell him, listen, I'm about to go and wake Lazarus. And Thomas is still in his mind saying, well, I guess we're about to go die. <laughs> like, we're all just going to end up dead, right? So Jesus, it's that specific kind of thinking that Jesus is trying to challenge in all of the disciples. Okay? So then we get to verse 17. It says, then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. He found that, hey, now remember, there's all, Jesus knew what he was doing. 
and I guess I can go into this also. You have to understand that this was not actually the first time, that even though we, we, when we talk about Jesus being able to resurrect, we usually go to the story of Lazarus, but this is not the first time that he actually had resurrected anybody, right? Right? He had resurrected Jairus' daughter, right? He, there, there was a boy, if you remember, that he had resurrected that when they were on his way, I think um, the woman of Nain, right? Yeah. So, so he had resurrected that, that, that person also before, right? But, but this is different in that it specifically says that he waited four days. The culture at that time, the thought was that after three days, there was still the potential that you may not necessarily be fully dead as yet. Right. So Jesus waiting until a fourth day is powerful because now all the people that were around, all the people that were about to witness what was about to happen in their minds. It's like, listen, this person cannot be alive right now, as opposed to all the other people. Right. This person cannot be alive because this is four days that he's been dead now. OK, so in everybody's mind, this person is absolutely unequivocally dead. You see, Jesus knows what he's doing. Jesus knows what he's doing. So now there's nobody when when he does what he's going to do. There's nobody that can say, oh, well, they weren't this time. He wasn't really dead. All right. So then it says, um, 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 verse 18. Now, Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. Right. And that's that the 15 furlongs. That's what I told you is about a, a little under two miles. Okay, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died, which is true. Which is true. Right. And sometimes we say that to God ourselves. God. If you had shown up in the situation, the situation would not have fallen to pieces. Why didn't you show up? But verse 22, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Right. Whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. So she had so she had some. She had some ought with God. She almost had a slightly a bit of a bone to pick with Jesus. But even in that feeling of having a bone to pick with Jesus, she still says, but listen, God, I still recognize who you are and what you're able to do. And even if you wanted to right now, you could do what it is that you're going to do. And I trust that and believe that whatever you're going to do will be right for the situation. Right. Oh, and the, I, the, hold on, because there, there's something else that I wanted to, to point out about that. Oh, no, no. You know what? I'm going to come back and point it out later. I'm going to come back and point it out later. I don't want to I don't want to kill it just as yet. I don't want to release it just as yet. Right. So if thou has been here, my brother would would not have died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. But 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 not only that. And this goes flows in the context of what we what we're saying here. Right. Because Jesus, remember, at some point had also told his people that, listen, this same thing that is possible for me is possible for you. That whatsoever you ask, my father will give it to you. Why? Because I am with the father. And because you all are tied to me, because now I recognize you all as brothers and sisters, right? And I have elevated you because of our connection now. I'm asking, when I ask God of things, things happen. But when you ask God of things, things can happen also. You see what I'm saying? So, so, so let's not just... Look at the situation as, OK, God is about to do something. Yes, Jesus is about to Jesus is about to do something and it's going to come into fruition, whatever he asks of the father. But he's showing us an example that whatever we ask, we can have confidence that God will grant if we're asking it in his will. Right. Not. And he uses the word whatever, whatever we ask. Right. When when the disciples had to go up and heal people or change situations around, they didn't go in there with doubt. Thinking that this, you know, we, we're not sure whether or not God is going to do this thing on our behalf. No, they walked in there like, oh, no, this is going to happen. <laughs> like we have so much belief that, that there is no doubt in our minds that whatever we ask, God will grant it unto us. 
And so what is God? What, 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 what are the things that we know that are in God's will that we're asking for, but we have not been asking with the confidence that God would like us to ask it for? And so, and so um, verse 23, Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. <laughs> Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. <laughs> Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Right? And when she had said so, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The master is come and call it for thee. Okay. So we'll stop there. So, so but, but the key thing, verse 24, when she says, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And, and, and this is what I want us to, this is the main thing that I wanted to bring for the sermon this morning. Her theology is correct. Her theology is correct, y'all. Right? I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But sometimes, watch this. Sometimes we have correct theology and it stops there. And having correct theology is not enough. Because the, the, beyond just having correct theology is your ability to live, to live a life of believing. Theology really is just a cognitive thing, right? Okay, theology means that I understand that this, this, I can break this thing down. I can tell you what's supposed to happen or what have you. I can tell you the correct things to say or what have you, right? But it's another thing to live a life of that faith. It's another thing to live a life of that belief. And so all of a sudden, when she says that, I, I wrote down here in my notes, I said, good theology versus a living reality, right? The coming resurrection versus I am the resurrection, you see what I'm saying? So the, cu the current, the, 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 the coming resurrection, that is proper theology. That is going to happen. We believe as Christians that that is going to happen. But what Jesus was in essence saying is, listen, I'm about to, I'm about to elevate you to another level right now. Pass just your understanding. But what I want you to understand is that all the, 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 this possibility that the resurrection in the last day brings to the table, I want you to understand that you no longer have to wait for that last day experience, but you can have that last day experience today, right? And isn't that what I said that is the focal, I, 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 told, I gave y'all the whole sermon away at the very beginning, I told y'all, listen, the, the, the point of this sermon is simply to understand that, listen, the, 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 we often find ourselves waiting for God to perform something in the last day, to solve all of our situations in the last day. 